Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, I've got three new uh, electronic uh, inventions to show you today that I think are going to make uh, <coughs> building my uh, system a, a whole lot easier. Uh, but first, before I show you those, I want to uh, give you a kind of an overview of what I've, I'm working on uh, right now. And uh, I've looked at a whole lot of uh, oscillating circuits here recently and uh, a whole lot of work by um, other people what they're doing with oscillating circuits and trying to get a, a general feel for where the uh, where the trend is on on harvesting power from the environment and so what I've what I've got here is basically an oscillating circuit uh, based on the tank circuit which is the easiest one uh, and the purpose of the tank circuit is uh, is really to just to to create a high frequency oscillation and then it goes through a transformer like a Tesla coil to boost the voltage uh, really high and then once you've got high frequency and high voltage then you go through a tuning process uh, where you tune the inductance and the capacitance and you do that with a variable capacitor and a variable coil and uh, and then once you get those the frequency tuned uh, in that and it's called parallel tuning and uh, and series tuning which is kind of interesting uh, it's, but when you get those things tuned you can take advantage of the fact that power which is measured in watts is volts times amps so if you're working with a low with low voltage you know 10 volts 12 volts whatever your your system is and you want to get a 100 watts you're going to have to have a, a whole lot more amps because the amps are multiplied towards low voltage equals a, a lot higher watts so and if you and if you're volt working with a really high voltage and to get that same amount uh, number of watts you just need a very tiny amount of amps so what people are um, you know what most people are doing including myself I was working on developing a battery that got some gets more amps and that's not really what you want to do uh, from what I've seen the best use of the battery is just use the battery to power the oscillating circuit and then it, so it's a, and it would be a very low draw and your batteries last a long time and you don't even need uh, much power like I, I showed in the in the last video there are uh, there are circuits uh, jewel thief circuits that will that will power an LED on two microamps you know and so you can that means you can power this the system off your body really because your body produces more than that so uh, anyway uh, what what I've realized here is that when you're working with the the low voltage side of this there's a low voltage side and then there's a high voltage side when you're working with the low voltage side you want the minimal electronics as you can let's say a, a transistor just a, one transistor is going to lower your voltage by 0.7 uh, by sub 0.7 volts and since I'm only my body is only producing 0.7 volts I can't I can't use any transistors okay so uh, it's it's important when you're working with the low voltage side of it to keep the number of electronic components down to the very minimum that you can and that way you so you can get enough voltage up to power your oscillator and then once you get to this part the high voltage part it doesn't matter because you're working with you know hundreds of volts or even thousands of volts and if what what so what if you lose a half a, a volt somewhere in a in a electronic component it's it's insignificant at that point okay and so basically you want to have minimal electronics and the low voltage part and you want to just use your battery to power your oscillator and then the whole point is to harvest uh, energy from from the earth you know um, uh, this is all based on tes Tesla's technology, especially his uh, hairpin circuit, which is an oscillating circuit, and his uh, radiant uh, energy collector, which was basically uh, just a steel plate that he had uh, mounted in the air. Okay, so uh, so basically, what we're trying to do here is 
collect positive ions from the air and negative ions from from the ground and you and you use that oscillating circuit to pull that energy in from that so you get so you know you don't need to worry about developing uh, a high powered battery because you you want to tap into the earth's battery basically and then use that uh, pump the voltage and the frequency up so that you can use that without having to draw a whole lot of uh, current just use high voltage look at Europe for instance they their power system uh, used to be 220 and then they raised it to 240 volts you know and they're going to raise it again I hear so uh, in the US we're down at, at, at a, we're working at 110 volts 120 volts you know so we're, we're using we're pulling a whole lot more current than we need to just if we just followed Europe's and doubled our voltage that we work with we would draw a whole lot less uh, less amps and therefore we could get by with smaller wires and, and on the infrastructure and, and everything so uh, anyway now for the first um, for the first thing I wanted to share I've got a picture here of a, uh, a high frequency tuner that a guy uh, developed and I'll, I'll put the link to it for you to watch his video this is a real simple tuner and you can tune the inductance and the capacitance with this thing and you can actually use this all by itself to pick up uh, to pick up power from the uh, from the air and, and you put that into a powering an oscillating circuit or something so anyway this is a really cool device and so let me show you a picture of that first I'll be right back all right, here's the device by uh, Tensil uh, Koala. When you watch the video, notice how uh, simple the device is. It's basically just a variable coil, a variable capacitor, and uh, an LED bulb that, uh, and when you've got it all uh, uh, tuned in. So uh, it's a real simple device, and I'm excited about this one. Check that out, and then I'll show you the next one here. All right. Now here's a picture of a new oscillator built by uh, Lid Motor, and it's a really cool uh, device, and uh, it's it completely eliminated the uh, transistor, which of course uh, saves you 0.7 uh, volts on the low end, and then you have um, uh, it's just a reed switch, which is a magnetic switch uh, in there to to do the oscillating. And uh, because it's magnetic, I don't think it has any losses in it at all. And then I think um, the LED, which is the other uh, component of the thing, uh, you need that to uh, for the indicator light for tuning it. So this oscillator should uh, work really efficient and be excellent in uh, my system. And last but not least, we have this new uh, voltage multiplier um, loop developed by uh, 10 manpower and he was working from a uh, Stifler loop uh, which is uh, another guy uh, Dr. Stifler who is developing a, a lot of really good uh, looping uh, technology for transmission of, uh, of high voltage high frequency power and uh, so he was working with uh, one of his loops and developed uh, this one which is even better and it's re and it's even simpler it's just got two inductors and a uh, and a uh, light bulb so and, and it gets over 200 and some volts so uh, that's really all right back to this uh, <clears throat> drawing again um, I'm going to have to order some um, magnetic switches so I can build uh, lid motors uh, mechanical oscillator and I'll have to order some uh, solid state inductors so I can build um, 10 man powers uh, voltage uh, multiplier loop and probably order a few variable capacitors at different uh, different sizes so I have a better choice of, of those to use and then I'll hunt through all my um, uh, scrap um, 
uh, electronic parts and stuff and see what else I can find that I can probably use uh, on this. Uh, and then while I'm waiting for those electronic parts to come in, I'll build a, 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 a tower in the in the yard outside. I've got some aluminum uh, radiators uh, from junk cars, and I'll bury a couple of those under the ground for a really good ground. The aluminum they're using virtual grounds on uh, on a lot of uh, people are the Stifler circuits and all that. They're using virtual grounds, just uh, grounding to chunks of aluminum and heat sinks and things. And so, but anyway, I'll, I'll I'll bury one out there, actually in the ground, and then I'll build a tower. Uh, the higher the tower is between uh, the ground and your radiant energy collector, uh, the higher voltage you'll get to start with too. So, uh, for your for your Tesla tower basically you don't need the coil to be that tall you just need the tower to be that tall so you get the voltage difference between the uh, the higher up you go the more voltage you'll get okay and then uh, and then I'll just use my bio cell in the uh, uh, in the wristband uh, to, for the power source for for the personal uh, I, I can do this with a personal system too now if you look at this and imagine a body now in a, in a in the bioelectric system your body is the actual capacitor of the system so uh, not to say that you couldn't add some more capacitance to it electronically but your body is actually the capacitor and if I have the battery on my wrist and it's just used to run the oscillator circuit and doesn't draw much power that should be fine and then uh, this uh, the, the coil over here that can be uh, put on your wrist or your belt buckle or anywhere really and then there's only a, a, a couple of diodes in the system to keep the, the to keep the thing circulating and keep the, your power from draining back down the ground and stuff so uh, that's uh, that's the general plan for right now so I'll get on that and I'll be back and I think I have enough time in this video to show We'll do a demonstration and uh, test the, uh, the biocell and the wrist bracelet. I'll be back. Alright, there's not enough time on this video to do the wristband battery experiment, so I'm going to close with this image here of um, it's the Sumerian god Enki. And he's not posing for a selfie in this, <laughs> in this photo. If, any, if anybody in ancient civilizations had advanced knowledge it would be Enki because he was the uh, god responsible for giving the Sumerians most of their technology and if you look in his right hand he's holding uh, something and he's pointing it at something and in his left hand he's holding something that could be a battery possibly and look at the look at the wristbands on his on his wrist now on his right wrist, it looks like it actually looks like a wristwatch. And if you if you ha if I had a close-up photo of this, you could see that actually on the face of that wrist watch is a spiral. Uh, and we know that uh, that uh, that pancake coils are are the most efficient uh, receivers of of, of uh, radiant energy. So. Uh, it looks to me like Enki there is has is using some type of uh, technology to me. So uh, I just wanted to share that with you so that you can hopefully you see that I'm not nuts about <laughs> thinking that these ancients used uh, bioelectricity because I think it's very possible that they did. We know they had batteries. Uh, we know that they had a lot of technology and look at all the things that they did that we, we can't do today. They, so this is all tied in somehow together it's just a matter of figuring out how it's tied together all right thanks for watching and i'll see you next time